פאנל. אנחנו רוצים להמשיך לנושא הבא בסדר היום שלנו, שזה הרצאות בסגנון TED, שיציגו הצלחות מהארץ ומהעולם. הדוברת הראשונה שלנו זאת אילדי מוריס. אילדי היא המנהגת של טרנינג ופרטנר ונאבלמנט את אדקס. היא מנהגת על קריאה ומנהגת את הטרנינג פרוגרם של אונליין קורס דיזיין, דבלופמנט ודליברי על אדקס פלטפורם. ואני רוצה להגיד לה, והיא כאן לפניי, להגיד לה לקרוא לה. Uh, shalom, everyone, and good afternoon. Um, we are really honored to be here, and thank you to all the IsraelX organizers, I know there are too many for me to name, for bringing all of us together today, and thank you all of you for showing up um, on such a gorgeous day as well. I actually uh, just heard from my family there are several inches of snow in Boston, Massachusetts right now, so I also want to thank you for bringing very good weather our way. Um, so what I want to talk about today is um, really one particular course. We've been talking a lot about education at a higher level, and I just want to bring it down to really more of a smaller story about a professor and a student and a course that both of them participated in. Um, in my role at edX, I'm in this unique position where I get to interact and meet all of the new course teams. And it's really, really exciting for me to understand what are the different motivations that people have for building a MOOC, a massive open online course. Um, and what are the motivations for the students to actually take this MOOC? So this one particular course that I wanted to talk about today, and this one particular professor, is um, Professor Richard Elmore. He is um, a professor of educational leadership at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And uh, he's been there since about 1990 and has taught several courses, but the most famous of which is called Leaders of Learning, um, which I thought would also be an appropriate course content for everyone in this room, because I think all of us, to greater or lesser degrees, are all leaders of learning. Um, and he... Uh, built this theory, kind of more of a framework around educational leadership, um, and this course called Leaders of Learning that talked about this framework was really quite popular. Um, but the Ed School was realizing that um, Dr. Elmore was actually going to retire soon, and around the same time, this whole MOOC platform was coming about, and Harvard X was formed, which is a course team at Harvard tasked with working with all the professors and instructors to build an online course. And they thought to themselves, this is a great opportunity for um, Professor Elmore to take his learning from his course and put it online in the MOOC world. Um, now, some, some of us out there who have worked on developing online courses know that there's many different motivations. Some people like to do it to get their name out there, their theories out there. Um, other people like to do it because they want to experiment with innovation and the cutting edge of online course development. Um, I think Dr. Elmore came into a slightly different category where he was asked to do it and really had absolutely no idea what he was getting himself into. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the design approach that the course team at Harvard X took with his course. Um, it's really organized very much in alignment with his framework, which is four different modes around learning, organization, leadership, and design. Um, and then within each of these modes, there are essentially four quadrants where he felt like people tend to fall in one quadrant over the other. Um, they are hierarchical individual, um, distributed individual, the hierarchical collective, and the distributed collective. And during his face-to-face -face course, students go through this process of understanding which quadrant they fall into and really what their approach to educational philosophy and leadership is. Um, so in order to kind of emulate this discovery process in the online world, um, he built, in the, along with the course team, um, a survey. So it was a required pre-course survey, and, and the, uh, all the students had to take it. And the goal of the survey was for the course team to understand, again, the motivation of the students in the course. Um, but it was also for the students to understand where they fell within Dr. Elmore's framework of education philosophy. 
Um, the other attribute of the course that I think made it very popular was the content was very clear, and um, there were several videos of Dr. Elmore, and they experimented with different ways um, that would really present him in his best light. Um, they tried typing out a full script and having him read the script, and that didn't go so well, um, So, because it came across as too staged and really not very authentic. So instead, um, they just gave him a list of bullets to speak to, and he spoke ad hoc, off the cuff, and really the videos were, were very effective and engaging, and people watching them felt like they were really in his classroom and listening to him. Um, in addition, though, to just having Professor Elmore, they also incorporated a variety of other educational leaders within the course to really give a diversity of voices. And all of these leaders had slightly different approaches to learning and education and worked at a variety of different organizations, not just schools and universities, but also nonprofits that were tasked with educating people. Um, and so I also think that this diversity of voices within the course also enabled to draw on many students. So the course was launched, and uh, it was one of these courses that was very um, heavily moderated in the discussion forums. It ran over about six weeks, and um, Dr. Elmore himself was actually involved in facilitating um, some of the responses in the discussion forums, along with two teaching assistants and one um, lead instructional designer on the course. Um, but what happened afterwards was kind of interesting and a little unusual. So, um, you know, typically, when there's a MOOC running and an instructor is running the MOOC, um, he or she will typically only hear from students through the discussion forum or a chat, basically any kind of remote channel. Um, what he didn't know was that there was a student in his course that was taking it from motivations of her own. She was a career changer, she was exploring different um, areas to work in, she came across his course, Leaders of Learning, she was interested in education, um, so she took his course, she really liked the course, she really liked him, she really felt like she got a sense of the culture at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, so she uh, decided to go ahead and apply, and lo and behold, she actually got in, and um, once she got in to the ed school, she ended up working with Professor Elmore on the next iteration of his course, which is actually going to launch later this year, if anyone's interested in seeing the, the newer version. So um, I thought it'd be interesting to hear a little bit about what they had to say about their experience. So I wonder if you could just uh, begin by telling us a little bit about how you found Leaders of Learning at Harvard X and uh, what your experience was uh, taking the course. So uh, I was familiar with the edX platform before I found Leaders of Learning, but I had never really taken a course from start to finish um, because I didn't find anything that was really intriguing up until I was looking for something that would introduce me to the field of education because I came from a financial services background um, and I found Leaders of Learning and I looked at um, what would be covered and I wanted to get that. Um, I just started out. I wanted to see what the course was like. I wasn't sure if I really had the intent to finish it from the beginning, but I found myself getting um, more and more into the course, especially with how it was so organized so well, and I knew what was being covered, and the material that was being covered was new to me in a lot of um, different domains, um, mostly because I wasn't a teacher and it was giving me um, uh, an insight into the field. Um, and I, I really enjoyed the last um, section, I should say, the modes of design, because it introduced me to the concept of, hey, physical design in learning environments is actually very important, as much as instruction um, and how like, you lead a classroom. Um, and it was very refreshing to me, that idea. Um, and that got me thinking, uh, well, I kind of want to learn more about education. If there's definitely things that I don't know um, and I'd like to explore more. And I was also intrigued by the fact that I could take a course online um, with a Harvard professor <laughs> and the field of online learning became really interesting to me too. Um, 
And then I applied, uh, and I got into Hugsy, and now I'm here, I'm working with you on the second version of the course. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're now a master's student at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, and uh, talk a little bit about your experience uh, in the online environment, and then in the graduate school environment, and kind of what are the similarities and differences and advantages and disadvantages? The online environment really gave me um, like an academic feel of what it's like to study at Harvard. But when I actually got to Hugsy, the difference was that I was surrounded by a bunch of other people who were also passionate about learning this field, or passionate about the field. Um, and the online environment provided people that I could talk with. Um, like I, I connected with certain user, certain other learners online. Um, I've sent emails with them. We've like had Skype dates. Um, but it was still different from actually sitting with 20 plus other people and sharing that experience at the same time. Um, and I, I've never been happier. <laughs> So do you see this combination of online learning and face-to-face -face learning as being important for the rest of your professional life? Uh, yes, I strongly believe so. Um, even when I got here, I didn't really stop online learning. Um, whenever I wanted to learn, say, like I wanted to learn more about web design because for a certain project, um, I would definitely learn a lot from my professors and peers, but I would also go to edX or uh, Lynda.com, which Hubsy provides access to, it's great. Um, and I would find myself uh, still learning online, even though the class component was there. So I'm going to so stop it there. Oops, I'm going to try me? to stop it there. There we go. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm going to stop it there. Um, but anyway, the conversation continues and Dr. Elmore talks about his experience as being the faculty member on the other side of this um, equation. And what he called out was a couple of things, um, primarily that, and this speaks to what other people were talking about earlier, the, the bit that I had translated for me, um, which is essentially that when you are building a lot, when you're building an online course, there is a lot of work involved and it does demand an extra level of academic rigor. Um, he expressed the fact that when he's in his classroom, he could kind of go with the flow a little bit more, be a little more adaptable um, to what's happening in the class. Um, when he's being filmed and knowing that this film can last indefinitely, he really invested a lot more upfront into the quality of his lectures and really nailing the content in a way that he felt very comfortable with, it would feel more final. Um, the other thing that he was very blown away by was, so the enrollment for his course was around 50,000 students, um, which is pretty good, particularly for an education course that we would consider to be a little bit of a niche perhaps. Um, but he was just kind of astounded by the strong interest, the high level of engagement, and the fact that, you know, rather than sharing his theories and ideas with a select few hundred people, he could really get it out to the world at scale. Um, and again, kind of going back to his next steps in his career, which is to um, essentially retire and start to walk away from education, this course for him essentially became his swan song. Um, a way to really sort of capture his, his final thoughts on the field of education. Um, so in closing, I just want to, uh, you know, share a quote from one of my favorite mentors, big Star Wars fan over here. Um, and uh, I do love Yoda, and I do think that Dr. Elmore um, and his course emulate one of the main responsibilities that all of us, in greater or lesser degrees, of leaders of learning all share, which is really to think about how to pass on what you have learned. Thank you. Thank you.